What does the phrase do not despise prophecy really mean? Hey, welcome back, smart Christians. A lot of times you hear, especially from those in the charismatic circles, those who believe in the gift of prophecy the way we see it today, they'll tell you or tell us not to despise prophecy. But what does that really mean? And are they using it incorrectly? Are they using it to force us to believe in some set of vague prophecies that have not come true? Uh, they've missed their deadlines. They're not specific. Is that what it is to get us to believe that? Or is there something else that the Bible or that Paul wants us to know from this passage? Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and let's see what's happening. Remember, Paul has just given a statement as to what's going to happen in the end time in the last days about his return. Now, some of us believe that where he's speaking of this rapture. Others may not. That's fine. That's not necessarily for this uh, important for this particular uh, conversation. But when we go there, Paul is giving kind of like his final words, almost like a benediction. And he's going to come back in Second Thessalonians and say that, no, you haven't missed uh, him coming back. But without that being stated, let's go ahead and look at what he's saying in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20. As a matter of fact, before we go there, let's start in verse 12. He says, we ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and who are over you in the Lord and admonish you, meaning those, the overseers and so forth, and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, he says, and we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them, see that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So as you see, he's kind of running down a little laundry list. Guys, as I'm leaving or at this time, make sure that you know all these things. Make sure that we remind everyone to do these things. Then he goes to verse 18, and I'm sorry, 19. He says, do not quench the spirit. Do not, here it is, despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good abstain from every form of evil. So what is his point when it says do not despise prophecy? Well, first of all, remember, when we speak of prophecy, he it does not always mean foretelling or future prophecy. It could. There's two types of prophecies. There is the foretelling, what's going to happen in the future. And there's a foretelling, what is now, a statement of fact, the indicative. As a matter of fact, most of the prophecy, most of the prophets, the words from God, given to them is not something that's going to happen in the future, but a right now, an indicative of what's happening at this moment. And then we see even the apostles and the disciples, when they make these statements, oftentimes they may just be simply quoting from the scriptures. In other words, what thus saith the Lord. Prophecy, all it really is, is a revelation from God, getting or giving information from God. It could be something about the future. It could be something about right now or even something that happened in the past. Remember at this time, the churches are missing something. They have the Holy Spirit. They have the ability to be saved by placing their faith in Christ. But the one thing that they're missing that we have today is they all don't have the word of God. And so there needed to be people that would come and give them the word to tell them a revelation of God. Sometimes it would be foretelling. Sometimes it's just right now. And so Paul's point is just do not despise this revelation of God. Notice what he says after that. He says, do not despise prophecy, but he says, but test everything. How do we test everything? As a matter of fact, this kind of harkens to what John says. He says that not every spirit is of God, but to test and see if it is of God. And so how do we do so? Well, we take it if someone, even if it's a foretelling prophecy, if it's about the future or if it's something about right now, the word says this, we test it. How so? Like the Bereans did when Paul went to Berea, they heard what he said and you know what they did? They tested it. They went back and they looked and searched the scriptures to see if it were true. We are to do the exact same thing. We test any prophecy, whether it's future telling, because guess what? Could someone possibly give a prophecy? I don't know. If they do, we test it. If they, if, if it, and if it does not come to pass, if it's not accurate, if it's vague, well, then we hold them accountable. The same thing we would do if someone is handling the scriptures, the word of God. If someone opens the word of God and gives us something that does not sound right, we go back and say, hey, that's not so. We test it. We make sure. We're not going to despise 
a revelation of the word of God. As a matter of fact, the very Bible that we have is the ultimate revelation of God. The Bible is the ultimate prophecy. So we're not going to despise it if it's right now or if it's the future. I am skeptical when someone says they have a prophetic word and they tend to mean something for the future. I'm skeptical, but let's see. As Paul says that you've been given this this gift, uh, this by according to a measure of faith that's been given you. And so if it's prophecy, well then prophesy according to that. And so fine, if you think that you have this particular gift, well then guess what we're going to do? We are going to hold you accountable. We may even look forward to it, but if it doesn't come to pass, then guess what we know? You are not a prophet. You are now a false prophet. The same thing holds true for someone who gives a word. And so if someone gives us a word that is from the Bible and we look and see that's not true, that person's also, if they're saying that God gave them some sort of revelation from this, we won't despise that. We'll do what the Bereans did, go back and look and see, and then we'll still hold you accountable. As a matter of fact, we're going to test what you say, whether it's right or wrong. And if you say it right, if you are a true person of God that gives a true revelation, be it a pastor, be it a, an elder, uh, be it someone who calls himself a prophet or apostle, what have you, we're going to hold you to the same standard. The word of God is here. There is no way that we dim this. There is no way that we impugn it. There is no way that we can say it's sometimes true, sometimes it's not, and then be looked upon favorably. No we, are, we have been entrusted with the word of God to handle it rightly and to present it rightly. This despising prophecy, none of us should do so. We should hold dear to the true, authentic revelation of God. Amen.